Hey YouTube beans, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another club banger today. We are hanging out in r slash Tales from Retail and apparently somebody's dog is howling and yiping in the background so apologies for that but as a person who's worked in retail for years like pretty much my whole adult life and also fast food I feel like this one for me is going to be gold because I can relate to so many of these stories. So let's just jump right into these tales from retail. Day I let my petty flag fly. Second post within a short time span, but I forgot this happened, and it's gold. I work at a large beauty slash cosmetic store. Our location is smack dab in the hoity-toity area of my town. I have green hair and tattoos, so the middle-aged rich soccer moms don't treat me too kindly as is. I'm a lead cashier, and on this specific day, people have been absolutely awful to me. Being about things that I can't change as a mere associate, just being unkind and so on. This woman brings some items to the counter and starts with, Hey, how are you? Did you find everything all right? Spiel. I scan one primer she grabbed and she sees the price. $29. Uh, no, that was $22. Me. Uh, I can go check the signage, but the computer is always right. It is the end all be all. Well, you may just want to go over there and check the signs right now and fix it. I have no issue double checking if we have a sale going on. Maybe the computer didn't automatically adjust the price for but the tone the woman used with me was so demeaning and rude, I decided to be petty. I walked over to the section, slipped the huge graphic strip out for that row of products, and walked my happy ass up to the register. You brought up the product name. The price for product name is $29, like it says here. Hmm, I guess I read the wrong thing. No apology, not even a whoops, my bad. I probably looked ridiculous grabbing that long graphic, but I had truly just had enough and decided to make her feel very dumb, rather than confirming the price just by checking it and reporting it back. There's no need to be mean to a retail associate for you lacking the comprehension skills. <laughs> this is totally true though. It's so petty and so ridiculous when this kind of thing happens. And yeah, this person did go a little bit overboard with it. And I guess that's the point of uh, tales from retail, but at the same time, it's like, eh, she was a little, she was a little jerky on that one. 100 grams of turkey, exactly. My husband and I used to own a deli. We had one customer that would say things like this, four slices of thin cut turkey weighing 100 grams. It is possible, but inevitably it would come out to like 95 or 105 grams. She would always complain that it was too much or too little. I was having a particularly bad day and wasn't up to the game of turkey bingo. My husband stepped up to help the woman, and sure, it came to 105 grams. Like clockwork, she complained, and my husband looks at her, smiles, picks up her four slices of turkey, takes a bite out, and puts it on the scale. She didn't come back after that. We lost a customer, but the frustration release was beautiful. <laughs> I always think this thing, this kind of thing is funny. I used to work at Starbucks, and people would come in asking for lattes at like, I need it at exactly 201.75 degrees. And then you would provide it and it would be 201.76 degrees and they would freak out. So yeah, I can feel this. I can feel this energy. Give me a refund now. How about now? Maybe now? This is from a few years ago. So I don't remember exactly what was said, but you'll get the picture. I work in a small charity shop where I spend all of my time on the cash register. As I've done since I've joined, age 14, when I started for my D of E, basically extreme scouts for those who don't know what that is. Until about a year ago, we didn't do refunds, exchanges, or credit notes. If you bought something, it was final. So everybody made sure to let customers know this, especially if they were uncertain, and to let them know that we had a changing room if they wanted to try anything on, or that we would reserve it for a day or two if they were buying something else, for example. So in my first few months there, a lady came in demanding a refund. I explained to her that we don't give refunds, gesturing to the no refunds poster covering the entire wall behind me. She slammed a black dress with a large stain on it and the tag removed, may I add, on the counter, saying no one had told her beforehand. I apologized, insisting there was nothing I could do. And then when she flipped, she proceeded to lean on the counter and scream in my face, a 14 year old kid, may I remind you, about how it was discriminating against her and my parents must be terrible people, and that she hopes that her kids don't turn out to be as vile as you. She demanded to see the manager, I didn't tell her there wasn't one, as it was Sunday, I just called my Sunday supervisor, who in reality was basically a manager. When the supervisor saw the woman, he sighed and reiterated the rules. When the customer argued she hadn't been told, the supervisor reassured her that she had in fact been told, because 
She was the person who sold her the dress. She then proceeded to tell the customer that, as you were told every day for the last five days, we don't do refunds. Now leave or we'll call the police. Still to this day, I can't get my head around the fact that she'd come in day after day, as my supervisor told me, acted in the same way every time in the hopes that someone would give her a refund. For a dress, she'd clearly worn, even to the point of accusing a 14-year-old of discrimination. I'm glad to say that we haven't seen her since. Dang, okay, this person, that person's super entitled. If the refund policy, especially with these charity shops, I know at least Goodwill in my area has like a very strict no refunds, no returns, no nothing policy. You buy it, it's yours. So especially if it's a charity shop, bro, I get why they don't do refunds and stuff on that. It's not like they're providing products and not donating it to something or putting it towards something. It, most places, I mean, are making profit so they can kind of take that stuff back in and sell it back out for a profit. These people... It all goes to like charity, so I, I don't know how that affects the cost of things in the store, but I feel like anytime you walk into one of those charity thrift shops, if you're buying it, you're keeping it. I hate answering the phone. Before I get into that, let me explain something. Our store isn't a big one, so our main phones are at the registers, where there should be at least one person at all times, which means whoever is working the cash register is almost always the first person to answer the phone. Our checkout area is right in the front, that way we can greet every single customer that walks in. Now that we've established that, you can imagine that means we have a strict policy against what we call shopping by phone. A customer can call in and ask any questions they like, but can't put them on hold or go check in the back as we've stated on occasion like today. Hello? I'd like to know if you carry something that would be in the kitchen section, me having no idea for certain. I'm very sorry miss, but we're not allowed to shop by phone. Caller, irritated, you can't just look for me really quick? Me, our store is store number, location, if you'd like to come in, we'd love to. I know where the store is. I don't want to drive all the way there. Me, I'm so sorry, miss. I'm not allowed to. Call her, fed up. Well, that's how you lose sales. Bye. Hangs up. Later that day, I headed back to the break room for my lunch. I looked where the item would be if we had it, and sadly, it's against store policy for me to make personal phone calls back to customers and let them know whether or not we have what they were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have a policy that says that you can't have people shop by phone, I, I get it. I used to work at a store. Actually, you know what? I could say it now because I don't work there anymore. I used to work at an Apple store. And I remember at the Apple store, anybody who would call in, we didn't want to give inventory numbers to. Because what if I told somebody like, hey, yeah, oh, yeah, this is a good idea. Let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, here's, here's all the items that we have and blah, 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 blah. Well, then we're giving people inventory numbers out. What if we sell all that stuff and then they come in and they're pissed and then they, now they feel entitled to get a free thing. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, well, since I didn't get this, can you get this for me at a discount? It's like, no, bro, that's not the way it's going to go down. Sorry. Which of your locations is closest to me? But don't you dare ask where I live. I've been working at a well-known beauty and cosmetic store for about seven months now. I was promoted to lead cashier within the first month. I clearly love my job, but I don't love the rude or arrogant customers that we get. I have a plethora of good stories, but this is one of my favorites. While I'm on cash wrap, I'm also supposed to be answering the phone. One semi-busy day, I receive a call from a man. He begins to go into detail about what he's looking for, why he likes the products, etc. I do have a line to take care of at this point, so I'm trying to hurry up the call by finding the items, placing them on hold, and ending the call. Okay, so which blank store is closest to my house? Me, dumbfounded. Well, uh, where do you live, sir? Man, I don't want to give that out. Me, okay, well, you can Google Maps our stores and see which one will be closer to you. I do know the next closest location is the store in blank. Him, I called to find out. Thanks for nothing, hangs up. I don't get paid enough for this, y'all. Yeah, just use Google, what the heck? Where did you get the phone number from? I mean, you could be one of those old school people that uses like the blue, or the blue pages, white pages, yellow pages, whatever the hell they're called. I don't know which pages you use to find phone numbers for businesses, but... He could be one of those just old school people, but at the same time, nearly everything has some sort of GPS or maps function in it. So why don't you just plug in your address and figure it out? You know, say half. The Chugger. Weird story from the old gas station. One of my weirdest customers was this skinhead looking guy. Tall, thin, with acne. What we'd call in England, a nutter. Not a bad guy. Mainly came in in the mornings, but he had one strange trait. He would buy two protein shakes every morning. I'm going to do the exact actions here. Customer puts two protein shakes on the counter. I scan them, he opens the cans, he hands me the money. I key in the transaction. He downs both half liter drinks. I give him his change. 
The whole transaction takes less than 10 seconds. The last time I saw this guy, he did the same thing with an 8-pack of Stella Artois in less than 20 seconds. Everyone in the gas station stopped and watched as he got into his car and drove away. My colleague called the police, and I don't anything else after that. Yeah, I could definitely relate to this guy, the chugger. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna kill an 8-pack in 20 seconds? I mean, that's impressive, my dude. Uh, also, a whole, like, I'm just impressed. Like, a liter of fluids in the span of 10 seconds? That's so wild. That's so much fluid. And, ugh, yeah, I've definitely dealt with some weirdos in some past jobs kind of like that. Where, when I worked at McDonald's, this guy wouldn't pay. He would order a sausage muffin, and he was a regular. He came in every morning. He would pay for a sausage muffin. He would not leave the or the, blah, 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 the register until he had the sausage muffin in his hand. So I'd ring him up and I'd put the change in and he'd just stand there. He'd be like, well, you can take a seat, sir, and I can call your number. And he's like, no, I'm not gonna leave here. So I'd try to walk over to the other register and actually like key into the other register and start taking orders on the other register. And he would just walk over to the register that I was at. And I would try to call over a manager and they'd be like, just give him the freaking sausage muffin real quick. So. We'd go grab him the sausage muffin, and then he would eat it in like two bites. Just bam, bam. He would sit there and just chew it in front of me, and then afterwards tell me whether or not it was a good sausage muffin. If it was a good sausage muffin, he would just be like, thank you, and leave the building. If it wasn't, he would make us remake it over and over and over again, and that was the worst. All right, y'all, I shared a little bit of a McDonald's story. That's kind of an old school story for me, but this was an episode of r slash Tales from Retail. If you enjoyed this, of course, let me know in the comment section below. Also, any other subreddits you want me to do or that I haven't done in a while that you'd like to see again, drop it down there in the comment section. And remember, as always, no glove, no love. Peace.